One very special family of graphs we can look at within the context of Hamilton paths and circuits is the complete graphs, where these we denote k sub n for complete on n vertices because c was taken for cycles, but these are the graphs where we have an edge between every pair of vertices. So on two vertices we get k2, which is just two vertices with one edge. For three we get k3, which looks like a triangle. It's three vertices, two edges each. For k4, we have all of those collections there in that box with the diagonals. Then for k5, we get more, k6, we get more, k7, we, we get more and more and more. We're always going to see that with these, the degree of every vertex is n minus 2, because we're trying to, or not n minus 2, n minus 1, because we have to cover every single possibility. And... Before I get into the specific instruction we have for Hamilton circuits with complete graphs, I do want to mention here that the book is kind of focused a bit uh, myopically, I guess you could say, on complete graphs in this context. But just understand that complete graphs aren't the only ones that have meaningful relationships with Hamilton paths and circuits. They have one very nice relationship. And in general, nice relationships with these constructions are hard to come by. It's actually quite difficult. It takes a lot of computing power to get any sort of general description of Hamilton paths and circuits. But just know that this isn't the only place that it could possibly matter. Anyway, if you want to describe the number of Hamilton circuits on a complete graph with n vertices, that is going to be the quantity n minus 1 factorial. Where n minus 1 factorial is the descending product, n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3, n minus 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, so you get all the way down to 2 and 1 multiplied together. This is read as n minus 1 factorial there, which does not indicate excitement, it indicates multiplication. For those of you that haven't taken stats before, this is a very straightforward application of a thing called fundamental counting, which says that if you have some number of ways to get one thing and some number of ways to get a different thing, if you want both of them, you multiply them together, where here that multiplication is done n minus one times in a row. Because what this talks about is arrangements of things where you have some selection of options and no repetitions are allowed, and order matters. So for this, what we're looking at is having some selection of vertices, where if you want to know where you can start, you have n minus 1 options of where you can start, because you have to start and end at the same place, so you don't have the full n. Then at the next one, you'd have n minus 2, because you have to go somewhere else to get to that next one. Then for the third, you'd have n minus 3, because we don't want to hit either of the first two. Then n minus 4, because you don't hit either of the first three. And so you all the way get down to the last one, which has to be where you started. So you've only got one option to end up back where you were, hence the n minus 1 factorial. Where it's important to mention here that when we're talking about this n minus 1 factorial value, that's looking at arrangements where the order isn't relevant, that is, AB is no different than BA. It gets a little bit shifted if we do care about those things in a slightly different sense, but here this is what we're looking at in particular. So if we have K4, the complete graph on four vertices, that diagonalized box like so, we could see there that we have four vertices. So we have four minus one factorial options, or we have three options for where we start, two for where to go next, and then one to finish, because we're going to need to use all four of those, and the one we start with is also, by definition, where we end, for a total of six options, where our six options are going to end up being A, B, C, D, A, A, B, D, C, A, A, C, B, D, A, A, C, D, B, A, a, D, B, C, A, and A, D, C, B, A. Or as I said, this is something that happens in terms of whether you care about what the distinction is between A, D, and D, A for that number, but we're not going to worry too much about that here. Where the next thing we're going to see is how we can actually apply these types of things, these types of constructions, to the context of applications using a new thing called a weighted graph.